great free throw shooter? Is he a great three point shooter? Is he a great dribbler? So you're saying the GOAT, and he ain't even the great in all them categories. What it is? He ain't lying. MJ just had everything, you know, from mid range to three point to post up game, and he could score and dominate in each position. These days, it seems like every NBA player has their own take and opinion on who is the greatest player in NBA history. Some say Kareem, maybe Kobe, or even LeBron James. But still to this day, a vast majority of players say Michael Jordan is the greatest player in NBA history. And every NBA analyst or player has their own angle and take on the greatest of all time debate. And the latest person to have their opinion is Ray Allen. And as you saw in the intro, he had a pretty good take on it, looking at both Jordan and LeBron and their overall skill sets. And I mean, looking at Ray, he's one of the few people in the entire world who would know is better. As he didn't just play against both of them, he was a teammate of LeBron James in South Beach. And looking at Ray's overall point, he was mainly looking at skill as well as overall talent. But in the greatest of all time debate, accolades, championship, the player's peak and longevity, those things also matter. But for this video, we're going to look at purely skill and compare both Jordan as well as LeBron. As Ray very clearly says, Jordan, his prime, was damn near flawless and easily more skilled than LeBron James. And looking at Jordan's prime and his overall peak, from 87 to 93, he was an absolute monster. When it came to the playoffs, averaging 35 points, 7 assists, 7 boards, he won 3 straight titles, 5 total MVPs, and his shooting splits were definitely very impressive. Shooting 50% from the field, 36 from 3, and 83 from the line. And one very common myth among NBA fans is that Jordan couldn't shoot the outside shot and make threes consistently. But like I showed you guys, when it came to the playoffs for a 7 year stretch, he shot 36% from deep. And looking at his best shooting run, that would be in 1993, where he shot 38.9% on nearly four attempts. When teams made a prime Jordan shoot from deep, he was consistent in the 35-39% to 39 range. And one thing I do want to note, when it came to three-point shooting, Jordan in the playoffs got better compared to the regular season. And when it came to the NBA Finals during his peak, he shot 42.1%. And looking at his best ever shooting series, that was in 1992 versus the Portland Trailblazers. And for this series, everyone knows Jordan was challenged to shoot the three. Now for Portland, that game plan worked very poorly as in game one, he had six threes and 35 points. And looking at the entire series, his shooting splits were off the charts, shooting 43% from three and 89% from the line. That series right there is quite literally proof when you force Jordan to shoot threes, he shows up and he knocks them down. Now compared to LeBron James in his career, many teams have exploited him for not having an outside shot. You can look at the Celtics in 08 and 2010, Dallas in 2011, and even the Spurs in 2013, as well as 2007. And looking at LeBron's absolute peak, from 2012 to 2018, he had some pretty major flaws in his game. He still put up great stats, averaging 30 points, 9 boards, 7 assists, on 51, 34, and 74 splits. But looking at his overall game, the most glaring flaw was his free throw shooting, especially late in games. As during his 7 year peak, when it came to 4th quarter free throw shooting, he shot 75%, which is around average. Compared to Jordan, who in his career shot 82.9% on free throws in the 4th quarter nearly 8% higher than LeBron James. And looking at his overall career, his free throw shooting is pretty abysmal. Never being above 78%, having multiple years below 70, and a career average of 73.4%. And I'm not joking when I say this, you could probably make a 10 minute long mixtape of LeBron missing clutch and crucial free throws. That's how bad he is late in games. He's taking his time. Short. Are you 
kidding me? And speaking of late game play, that's one area Jordan is far superior compared to LeBron James. Looking at LeBron's entire career, when it comes to the late game crucial shots in the playoffs, more times than not, he fails. Looking at this graphic, on game time or go ahead shots in the final 24 seconds, he shoots 35.7%. In the final 10, 39.1%, and the final 5, 38.9%. For an average NBA player, those string splits are definitely pretty impressive. But for an all-time great NBA legend, they're definitely underwhelming. And looking at Jordan's career, when it came to the big time shots, he was in the 45 to 50% range. Look at the final 24 seconds, the final 10, or even the final five. And if you want to talk the biggest stage, the NBA Finals, where it matters most, in the final 24 seconds of a game, LeBron James is 0 of 7 on game time go ahead shots, compared to Jordan, who is 4 of 8. And like we said early in this video, one of the big time myths that Jordan couldn't shoot threes. But you know, one thing I never hear is LeBron James can't shoot from the mid range. That's one of his major flaws throughout his entire career, as his overall game is shoot threes or drive to the basket. As once again looking at his overall peak, when it came to mid-range shooting, he shoots 38.3%, compared to Jordan, who shoots 43.3%. And to show you guys how big the gap is when it comes to mid-range shooting, Jordan aged 38-39 in the Wizards, when it came to the entire NBA, was number one in mid-range makes. Once again, shooting above 41%, which is better than a peak LeBron James. So I think looking at all those aspects, that's a pretty good concept of what skill is for an NBA basketball player. You can look at the little nuances like footwork, balance, control, and the finer details, and I think Jordan in those respects is still better than LeBron. And looking at a peak Jordan, when you're looking for overall flaws, there's very few if any. As he was a great scorer, he could shoot the three, the mid-range, he was an elite defender, he was clutch, he made his free throws. And was a great passer as well as rebounder. Arguably his only flaw was low post defense on centers as well as power forwards. Besides that, he was damn near flawless and easily one of the most skilled basketball players in NBA history. And look, LeBron James in his own right, he is very skilled and he is spectacular. But if you ask someone on the street who is the most skilled basketball player of all time, I guarantee you you're not going to hear LeBron's name. You'll hear Jordan, Kobe, maybe Curry or Larry Bird. Yes, LeBron James, he is highly skilled, but among the best players of all time, his overall skill level simply does not compare. And when it comes to the Jordan versus LeBron debate, Ray Allen is 100% right. 